to see these tweets before uh, our executive producer, uh, Stephen Bond, a.k.a. Bondo, starts this show. But boom, here we are. This is last call. Dean Blandino and me, I'm Mike Pereira. We watched a lot of football over a four-day period, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Dean, what do we got? Well, I just want to establish, Mike, you are one of the very few people who does not use their cell phone for Twitter, that you are actually on a laptop, maybe even a desktop, tweeting away, and when you had to go to your phone, hence the boomer comment. So I appreciate that. Mike still reads the paper every day, too. He still reads, still reads the paper every day, which I do. I, I miss those days of reading the paper. Um, used to get the New York Post, New York Daily News, all those great New York tabloids. But Anyway, we got a great, great show. A lot of football, like Mike mentioned. A couple of controversial calls in the Cardinals-Patriots game. One on a blindside block. Was it a foul? Took back a Pats pump return touchdown. Then later in the game, Cam Newton gets crushed at the sideline by Isaiah Simmons. Was it a foul? For the Browns and Jaguars, it's a game of inches or even a game of centimeters. Somebody call Gene Steratore and get his credit card. Out. Did the Colts catch a break? T.Y. Hilton, big play in that game. Did they catch a break with instant replay? And also, the Clemson legend, the man, the myth, Hunter Renfro, third in Renfro. Did he make an unbelievable catch at the sideline? What happened there? But let's start with our opening calls, Mike. What do you got? I'm looking at you. Were you embarrassed about this call, actually? Because you look a little red-faced. I can't, we'll have to... We'll get into that later. Yes, we'll definitely touch on that later. Hey, it's a big hit on Cam Newton. I get it. Simmons hits him. Foul. It's foul was called for for unnecessary roughness. We're not sure if it was for a late hit out of bounds. Hey, Mike, opening call though. Not. We'll we'll get to we'll get to Cam. Opening call. What's your opening thought of the week? Oh, my opening call. Jeez. So you got me all flustered. He Um, is. He is a boomer. Start first thing that goes. Uh, yeah, well, it's been gone for a while. Uh, my opening thought is, after watching so much football uh, over the last uh, four days, basically, is the quality of the game seems down to me. And, and I think there's a lot of reasons. Um, it's injuries. It's the COVID. It's the opt-outs. A lot of things. But, you know, when I watch the game, um, it almost seems like I don't enjoy the actual game itself, but I still get a kick out of the players and the performances. And I, and I watched like, okay, last night, I wasn't going to watch the Packers and the Bears, but I decided to turn it on, and I love watching Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he enjoys playing the game so much. I just love the way he plays it. And, and to me, you know, there's those types of players. You know, you get the – you get the Russell Wilson. You get the Patrick Mahomes. I love watching Kyler Murray. Just love watching Kyler Murray. I like the way he runs. So although to me the, the quality of the game is down, which may be due to the fact that, you know, no training cams, it was all virtual stuff. And I think that's true on college level also. Although the quality doesn't seem to me to be there, the performers, certain performers still are. And so to me, I'm still intrigued with how some of these great players play the game and make a interesting year out of something that to me where the quality is down a bit. How about you? Yeah, that's a good point. You you always think about the football NFL being the team game and other sports more like the NBA, which is, which is more star driven. And we do have amazing athletes and amazing stars in the NFL, but it's always been more of a team game. And I, and I agree that the football does feel the quality is a little bit less I think there's so many factors and certainly COVID in the off season and opt outs and everything else has, has a big part of that for me, you know, yesterday was a good reminder. And this is something I know you deal with, with social media and, and there's so many good things about social media and it's such, it's been such an amazing, um, you know, invention, whatever you want to call it. Cause where else would we have the ability to connect with, you know, our heroes, people that inspire us. And, and if 2020 has taught us anything is we really need to be able to connect with, with our fellow, you know, human beings right now. And, uh, and there's so many good things about it. And for us in officiating, right, we get to humanize the officials and, and give a perspective in a, from, you know, for officiating that maybe some people don't 
always take into consideration and we and we get to explain things and have the, that interaction which overall is positive i mean i got a i got a message from marcin strapansky from the polish american football league right two weeks ago and we talked about that i would have never connected with him or christian grunick who's a young packers fan who reached out to me on social media and now we text during packers games and and we exchange birthday cards like those connections are amazing but but yesterday i was reminded of the downside of social media when calls don't go in your in your team's favor and you start to blame people and there's that negativity which to me sometimes crosses a line and and too often especially twitter it devolves into a a cesspool of smug cynical a-holes who are just constantly trying to out mean and uh, and one up each other and and for me you know okay fine that's your right i'll deal with that and uh but you know for all those those people out there that choose twitter to to be negative there's always those positive and i know you have this mike it's those positive interactions that make it worthwhile and i just ask one thing to the negative people if you're going to call me an ass hat or or a moron just do it early in the tweet so i know it's a negative tweet and i can move on to the good stuff because that's what i want to focus on so that's my that's my opening thought mike well i i i when i read the tweets if it starts you are i don't read anymore <laughs> actually, it, I it actually never, it never's like I, you are great I, right it never started it, no and, and you know everybody tells you and i'm sure they've told you and that they've told there are so many times when i have just wanted to fire back but they sure. said don't take it personally don't take it personally and if you want to actually get some love just say on twitter you know what i've had it i've had it enough is enough and then all the love comes out after that but you're right it is i mean the only reason i went on twitter was to try to educate i mean exactly. because a lot of people just don't know the rules or don't understand the philosophy and and then the other thing that happens is your tweet ends up going in somebody else's conversation so they're talking back and forth and they're calling themselves they're calling names back and forth to each other not even not even to me or, but you're but us. you're always in it i always feel like i'm oh, watching two people it. argue in the park and then i'm just yeah, sitting there yeah. yeah it is uh it's an interesting part of our game that at times is very frustrating but let's let's move on to the plays that happened on sunday and and the first play we're going to talk about the big play everyone was talking about end of the patriots cardinals game isaiah simmons hits cam newton flags are, are are thrown 15 yards added to the end of the run patriots kicked the game winning field goal a couple of plays later what did you see mike what did you think on this one i, I really i didn't see much I mean, for one thing, you know, Juice is right. I mean, Cam Newton was not just running to get out of bounds. He was trying to get the first down. You're inside of a minute. And so to me, you know, it's not like you're going to give him some courtesy of letting them get out of bounds. And, and I think that there's certainly not a late hit because he's inbound when it happens. And, and I don't think it's illegal use of a helmet. I mean, does he have some helmet contact? Yes. Um, does he have shoulder to shoulder contact? Yes. But is it what falls into this illegal use of the helmet? The, the um, initiating contact with the helmet. We talk about guys getting linear and leading with the, uh, with the helmet. And, and to me, it doesn't follow into either a late hit or this, but I get it. I get it because the fact it is a big hit. And, and I think sometimes the calls are reactionary. I mean, you see it, it's big, and with no people in the stands, guess what? You hear it, and it is loud. I'm telling you, being on the field before, even with the crowds, it's unbelievably loud. So to me, it was reactionary, and I understand it, but I just can't put it into the category of a foul, period. And I agree, and I can certainly see, like you said, why the flag was thrown. It's it's a big hit. Look, Cam, if you've ever stood next to Cam Newton, when I when I stood next to Cam Newton, he looks like a defensive lineman. He is a big, big person, and you you're going to have to bring a lot of force to bring him down. And that's what Simmons did. And I agree, it's clearly not a late hit out of bounds. Cam is. It's not even like he's crossing the sideline. He's still in bounds. His next step 
was in bounds. Then you get into the use of the helmet. Simmons was called earlier in the game for use of the helmet foul. It's such a hard play to officiate. I thought in that instance, the runner actually dropped his head. Simmons did lower his head, but there was a collision more so than either person being at fault. This one, yeah, he's lowering his head, but there's the contact is with the shoulder to the body. That's where the force comes from. You get these still frames that go around, and I can freeze it and say, look, the, the helmet is touching the, the other helmet. Well, look, helmet to helmet's not a foul necessarily. You got to lower the head and initiating, initiate it with the helmet. I didn't think it was a, uh, a flag, but certainly understand why it was called. But it's a big, big play in the game, obviously. And there were big plays um, in this game throughout and a lot of calls. And it felt like most of the calls went against the Patriots until this call at the end. Yeah, it was interesting because you, you would have thought that on this call, which essentially allowed New England to win the game, um, you would think that the full report that came out afterwards would have addressed this issue on what the officials saw here. But in reality, they didn't even ask that question, apparently. They asked the question about a blindside block that took away a touchdown for the Patriots. Ended up to be a four-point switch because they uh, ended up kicking a field goal on that drive. But your thoughts on whether or not it was a blindside block, Dean? Yeah, I, I do under the way the rule is written and how the league has and the league put out a lot of video in the preseason or offseason. We didn't have a preseason about blindside blocks. And, and according to those tapes, yes, this is what they're directing their officials to call. And, and the blocker in this instance, Jennings, he, he's going to throw the block, even though at the moment of impact, he is stationary. He is throwing the block back toward his own goal line. He's using the shoulder with force. You can't go helmet, shoulder, forearm to the body. That, that is the rule that was implemented a couple of years ago. So I think under the, the rule and how the, the officials have been directed to officiate this, it is a foul. There were three flags thrown on the play, and it's obviously a big call because, like you said, it takes back the punt return. I think one of the issues is the idea, the, the terminology, blindside block, because a lot of people on social media were saying, well, how could it be a blindside block when they're facing each other? And, and that, I think, may confuse some people, and maybe that term needs to change but it's the direction the block is being thrown in. If you're going upfield towards your opponent's goal line, you can make that block in that manner. If you're throwing it back the other direction, you can't throw the shoulder into the body. You've got it. And we've seen this on punt returns, more of a shield type action where they just kind of drive by, put their arms out, and it accomplishes in many cases the same thing. So I thought it was the correct call, but I understand the confusion. I just don't like the call, period. But I think, like you, it's because I don't like the rule. I mean, the college rule is a, bit, is a better rule. I mean, it talks about where the guy's coming from, actually a blind side, where the, where the guy that's blocked can't see it coming. And it was the old blow-up block. It was the decleater that happened usually on punt returns, maybe kickoff returns, interceptions. But, you know, to me, I, he's head up. And it's reasonable to me that the, the guy that was blocked should have expected it. And, and I get it to the technical aspect of the rule. Um, it is a foul, but where do we start taking common sense away from the technical aspect of it? And I, 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 I'll say again, technically, I think they're right. But to me, um, I just, it doesn't fall into the old decleater thing we were trying to, trying to get rid of. So I, I don't, I don't like it. And i to me, it would be interesting if I was to go back to grading, would I no call this and, and, and say that or say it's incorrect? I don't think I would, because to me, he's set. He's not really moving in any direction. He leans back in that direction. And um, I, I just there's just not no part of it that I like. Well, I don't, there's no part of LA traffic that I like, but we got to deal with it, right? That's the rule, Mike. But anyway, let's yeah, move on. An area where I don't have to deal with traffic. Let's move. The fact that you're still driving is a problem, but let's move on to Cleveland Jacksonville game of inches, fourth down, big, big play in the game because Cleveland's up by eight. They're trying to run out the clock. If they get the first down, it pretty much allows them almost to end the game. Um, Kareem Hunt up the middle, Mark Short measurement. What happened, Mike? Well, measurement that was short. Jerome Boger, the referee, after the measurement, 
holds up his hands probably six inches apart, saying that it was well short. Um, it certainly, I don't think it was that far short, but we seem to deal with this about at once every two years. I mean, I remember Walt Coleman, when he was the referee, one of those presented itself. The angle made it look like the ball had actually touched the edge of the, uh, of the rod there, which is all it has to do. But if you take the angle, move it a little bit further up, then it's going to look like it may not be. To me, it's not really an issue, be, issue because if you watch the Browns players, they're all looking and no one reacts. No one, no one goes and says, hey, wait a minute, that's a, that's a first. You know what? They all turned and went away. And, uh, and it was not, by the way, challenged um, because it, I, it, wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been changed, not enough to change the spot. But angles play a, a role in everything. I mean, angles, even in the 49er Ram game in the fourth quarter, two great spots by the, rep, by the officials in the, at, near the end of the game which allowed San Francisco, the second one, to make a first down and kick the field goal. Angles, if it's shot from behind, shot forward, make the line look further up, and everything is distorted unless you get something right directly down the line and can see the ball. So to me, I know what it looks like, but if you had an angle from all of those players that were standing around there, I'm sure that it's short. Yeah, and I agree. And th there's always these still shots, po still photos that go around on social media. And how could they look? Jerome Boger is looking right at it. He's going to get the best angle and he's going to make a decision. And he ruled that it was short. And, and like you said, the players didn't react. Cleveland didn't challenge and everybody moved on. And, and this is just something I get asked a lot. Um, you know, why can't we with all the technology? that we have why why are we still bringing these chains out why do we still have this whole this whole operation like this and and I always respond there my 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 initial reason has always been look you know it's the, the technology is great but but there's no one that has come to the NFL and I was a part of that that said you know we're gonna we're gonna have a laser going across the field there's always some some you know factor that you don't consider with that, I like the chains. I think it's it's exciting. I mean, we've all grown up watching football, fourth and fourth down, and the ball's there, and you stretch the chains. Is he going to make it? Is it not? So I like that. The second reason is because I like the progressive commercials with the two chain crew guys. And Love if we get them. rid of the chains, then we Love can't them. have those commercials. So I like old school chains. Yeah. Let's bring it out. Let's have let's have some excitement. I don't want to see a laser shooting across the field. I, I agree. It gives guys my age a job too at the at the uh, at the stadium. But then the other thing I'd said too is I remember they presented it one time. Um, you know when I was running the program, it's how, why it doesn't make sense to me. You can have the, a laser shot that maybe shows the tip of the ball breaking the plane at the goal line, but then you better put a laser, a chip in a guy's knee, the runner's knee, and his elbow. It's it's going to be inconclusive if you cannot see the body part anyway. So um, the tradition of the game, we're losing it more and more, and I hate to see it go any further. But I'm going to challenge you now. I'm, I'm going to challenge you. T.Y. Hilton, a play near the goal line. Controversial. Controversial. It's actually um, ruled a fumble on the field, and it was recovered in the end zone, actually, almost right on the goal line for a touchback. And replay got involved because it was a change of possession. And they changed it. They changed it. They put T.Y. Hilton down. Huge play of the year gets the Colts inside Tennessee's five-yard line. It's under review, but it looks like his knee was down. I, I think a great decision in replay to put him down and one that um, I'm anxious to hear your thoughts about. Yeah, and, and I love that setup, Mike. And, and our, our executive producer, Stephen Baum, thought this play was so controversial and so exciting that we needed to spend time talking about it. He found one tweet that was kind of like a very vanilla tweet about it. It's, look, it's rule the catch, fumble, recovered by the defense. Replay comes because it's a, it's a turnover. Replay gets involved. He's clearly down. Let's move on and talk about something much more interesting <laughs> And how I almost blew myself up last night trying to light my gas fireplace for the first time. I've lived in this place for three years. I've never tried to light it. I'm getting into the Christmas spirit. I got my Christmas tree. It was 
by Southern California standards, a little chilly last night. So I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna start a fire. Well, as soon as I lit that thing, it blew up in my face and I burned, and if you know me, how, how, how sensitive I am about my hair, I burned some of my hair in the side of my face. You can't see it because I've been applying aloe all night and all day, but I lost some hair last night and I'm very upset about it. And that's way more interesting than the T.Y. Hilton book. Well, the good news is you won't have to color your hair this coming weekend then because it's already singed a little singed a little darker in the same way for your beard. You won't have to color that. But I do get some know, gray in my I, beard. I, I, Here's I like a tip. One. Here's I, a tip have, for, for all you. Gray in the beard, just a little mascara. That's all you need to do. That's it. Um, I, I, I get it. You know, I think back, uh, you know, I think Hannah Storm is terrific. And, boy, she suffered serious, serious injuries with a barbecue. You know, which blew up like that. And ever since I heard that about Hannah Storm, my gas barbecue, I light it like this. I get down underneath and push the button just in case that happens. Oh, but, I'm, I'm not. The next know. time, I don't even think I'm going to try to light. Don't this try thing. it. The next oh. time, I might just get in a full hazmat suit and then and then try it. So, or at least do something. But anyway, let's move on from 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 me blowing myself up and the really controversial T.Y. Hilton play. Let's cover. talk about Didn't Hunter cover. Renfro. Yeah. Raiders, Falcons, really a, a surprising result. The Falcons are like, I can't figure out the Falcons. And I can't figure out the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, the Falcons go in and just blow the Raiders out. But this was a, a, an interesting play at the sideline. Ruled incomplete, went to review. What, what happened here, Mike? Well, it stayed incomplete. And I think it's right that it stays incomplete. Um, he's going to go to the ground on the sideline. Looks like the ball may move some, but – Move is not total loss of possession. I think he's got his right hand maybe on the ball as he goes to the ground. And I, I think it's this is one of these plays that whatever you call in replay, it should stand because there's nothing clear and obvious. And I think the bigger issue, which was talked about in one of the tweets, is the grab of the jersey. You know, why was that not pass interference? Um, and I think it's a legitimate question, but – we have to see the grab of the jersey there. You know, it's different when the ball is in the air as opposed to before the pass is thrown where there's there's a strict rule that says you cannot grab the jersey and pull the jersey. It's automatically defensive holding. But when the ball is in the air, now you're talking about is it enough for pass interference? And when you say is it enough, that means does it significantly affect the receiver's ability to make the catch and to me, in this case, it doesn't. And I think that's a fine line that people don't understand. It doesn't really have to have an effect before the pass is thrown. But once it gets into the air, then whatever act you, you perform, whatever contact you have on that receiver has to, again, significantly hinder his ability to make the catch. So I think in replay, Dean, it's got to stay. I don't think if they'd have called it as a catch, I don't think they would have reversed it. And again, and I don't think it would have been enough that grab of the jersey for uh, defensive pass interference. Yeah, I, I agree on the on the grab of the jersey. Much different standard. Whereas with the ball in the air, it has to you know significantly hinder. Where before the ball's in the air, any any jersey grab is going to be defensive holding. I think the issue here, and I know some people mentioned, well, the ball didn't hit the ground. How is that incomplete? He got both feet down in bounds. Well. At the sideline, he is going to the ground. So if the ball comes loose, even though it doesn't hit the ground, if the ball comes loose during that process of him touching the sideline, then it's an incomplete pass. And that's why they ruled it incomplete and why they ultimately stayed with it. Um, you, there was one shot where it looked like the ball kind of popped. But I'm like you, if they had ruled this a catch, I, I don't think it's clear and obvious to overturn and the thing about Hunter Renfro, and there's a couple of receivers, and he's one of them, where I don't think I've ever seen him drop a pass, just straight up drop a pass. And he makes an unbelievable, if you watch him just reach out, just to get control of that football for as long as he did, just shows you how good his hands are. The other guy watching the game, going back to the Patriots-Cardinals game, is DeAndre Hopkins. I've never seen DeAndre Hopkins just drop a pass, just straight up drop. Yeah, he's got his hands on some tough ones, and maybe he didn't come down with it, but... Hunter even Renfro, in Hopkins, yeah. Even and, in and that's where I'm going with it. Thanks for, for setting it up. 
You remember DeAndre Hopkins who caught the Hail Mary against what team was that, Mike? The team that he beat? I think it was I think it was the Bills and kind of caught it in between three Bills defenders. Three Bills defenders. Game over. The 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 Cardinals had like a one percent chance to win that game, but against Buffalo, obviously that one per chance, that hit, that was the lottery. DeAndre goes up, makes the catch, and Buffalo loses. Although our, our man, and this is for Stephen Bond, our, our executive producer, they did come back. They have won a couple since that game. So eight and three, we'll see if they can keep it rolling. But anyway, last thing, we have one more video to show. There's some audio attached to this. I want to share this. This is a behind the scenes look at Mike Pereira getting ready for a big day of NFL football and rules analysis. Can we run the video? It's not, it's not spread across the top. It's an article about each of the games. It has the Bills minus four. It has the Jets. Uh, it's CBS Sports, and it's NFL odds. CBS Sports posted three hours ago. NFL week. It's week twelve. NFL odds pick schedule. How to watch streaming. Expert picks again. We're supposed to be talking about officiating analysis, rules, ten second runoffs. I have, I have done what are you talking studying. about? I studied from 7 o'clock till about 9. So I've done all the study about my friend John Lukerich and I. We, we have a little action. $5 a game. $5 a game. You pick every other week. And he didn't know about Denver not having any quarterbacks. And so he was looking at the old five-point spread. And I said, I'm not going to take that. You either give me 16 and a half points or nothing. I hate losing five bucks. And I still lost. And, you know, it's good to know that yep. your, your officiating background has not impacted your gambling, uh, you know, future. So that, that's good to know. That's the show. Everyone, thanks for watching. That's Mike. I'm Dean. No Thursday night football this week, but download the Fox Sports app. You can actually watch Last Call. I learned today that you can watch Last Call on the Fox Sports app. I'm going to go download it now and watch Mike and I over and over today because Stephen Bond produces such an amazing show. Thanks, everyone. Maybe, maybe Bondo will tell us how many people actually watch it. For the best stories, easy-to-find scores, and comprehensive team pages, plus access to every live Fox Sports game and exclusive bonus cameras, download the all-new Fox Sports app now.